React just quietly solved one of its most annoying problems when it comes to conditional rendering. In this video, I'm going to show you what the problem is with the traditional approach to conditional rendering, and then I'll show you how to fix it using a brand new component that React just released in its most recent version. We'll cover when and when not to use this component, and also some practical use cases. Let's get into it. Up to this point in React, you essentially have two options when it comes to conditional rendering. Option number one is you use either the logical AND operator or some sort of ternary. For example, here's a simple scenario where we have a button that whenever it is clicked, we hide this component, and whenever we click it again, we reshow it. And essentially, I can just click over and over again to toggle this component either on, meaning it's shown, or off, meaning it's hidden. The way that we handle this 90% of the time in React is by having a boolean or some condition that tracks whenever we should show the component. In our example, we have this state called show, that is just a boolean that whenever it is true, will show my component. Whenever I click this button, it goes to false, so then we hide the component. The code for this is just the condition or boolean, the logical and operator, meaning double ampersand, and then the component that you want to conditionally render. For simply just showing and hiding a component, this is by far the most common way of handling conditional rendering. However, doing this comes with a slight drawback. Whenever this condition right here becomes false and we hide the component, we're actually completely unmounting the component, meaning we lose track of all its internal state, any effects it has, any refs that are attached to it, gone, vaporized basically. For example, this my component right here has this internal count state that whenever I click this increment button, just goes up by one each time. So right now, if I click it a few times, let's say I'm at count state 14, and then I go back here, we see that once this condition becomes false, it will unmount. When I re-click it, now my state is reset back to zero. And that's of course because when we conditionally render like this, the component's going to fully unmount, meaning it loses track of all of its state. And then whenever we remount it, we go back to where it started at, so the default value of zero. In many cases, this behavior is perfectly fine. We don't care if we fully unmount the component or lose its internal state. However, in some cases, it is not fine. In some cases, we do not want to lose all the state inside of the component that we are hiding. And that's where traditionally, option 2 for conditional rendering has come in. Whenever we as React devs see a scenario where we don't want to lose all the state inside of the conditional component, we typically do something like this. This example is the exact same, except for how we're conditionally rendering. If we don't want the component to lose all of its state, what we normally would do is use CSS to simply hide the component, so it's still technically in the DOM, it just can't be seen. If we want to show the component, we give it a display property of something like block, and if we don't want to show it, we give it display none, so it's hidden. Whenever it's display none, it is still part of the DOM. As far as React can see, this component is in the DOM just like any other JSX that we have. However, we're simply using CSS to make it appear like it's gone. What this will do with this implementation is if I go over here to my component, I increment it to let's say, I don't know, six, then I hide the component, and then I show it, we are still at six. With this implementation right here, because we never actually fully unmount the component, we always keep track of the internal state. We never lose it whenever we show or hide the component. This right here is the traditional way that React devs have gotten around the problem of losing state whenever we conditionally render a component. However, this option has a couple of drawbacks to it. First of all, this syntax right here is just a little bit goofy. Having to wrap components in a separate div sometimes and then manually hijack the CSS is not the prettiest thing in the world. Another issue is that if we go with this method and we have cleanup effects that are inside of my component here, we're completely out of luck because we cannot do that with this method. What I mean by that is oftentimes in components where you want to specify what happens whenever it unmounts, we would have something like a use effect and we would give it something like this. Have a dependency array and we would say on the return, we want to do something like some sort of cleanup, like unmounting some refs, or if we're doing anything involving memory or the DOM, just go ahead and clean those up. That way we don't have memory leaks or other unintended side effects. The problem is, if all we're doing is hijacking the CSS to hide it like this, this cleanup effect, this return here, is never going to run. So basically, either option we have for conditional rendering has drawbacks. If we do the traditional way of having the logical AND operator, we're going to lose track of all the internal state. If we do it this way by hijacking the CSS, we can never run cleanup effects and there's also other unintended side effects that could be a problem. React has very recently addressed this issue. As of React 19.2, which was released about a month ago, they introduced a new component called Activity. How you use it is instead of manually hijacking the CSS like this to make a component just be display none, what you instead do is you can get rid of this and you can Control Shift P, wrap the component, 
and a new one called activity that you would just import from React like any other component. Aside from the children that get rendered inside activity, this component only takes in one prop, and that prop is just called mode. This is where we give it the condition that we want to conditionally render on. What we can say is if show, then our mode is visible, otherwise our mode is hidden. This mode prop right here can only be one of two values, the string visible or the string hidden. React plans on adding more modes in the future, but for right now, these are the only two modes that are supported. If show is true, we're just putting it as visible. If it's false, we're just putting it as hidden. And functionally, this new activity component behaves very similarly to just making a div that conditionally applies CSS to show and hide the component like we just had. If we save our code over here and now go over here and start incrementing our count, and then we hide it and then reshow it, our count is still at nine. No matter what state I go to internally, when I show and hide this component, we don't lose track of its internal state. The reason I say it's functionally the same or very similar is because this activity component right here under the hood is essentially doing the same thing we were just doing using display none to hide the component. So why use this new activity component rather than doing what we just did originally? Well, I can give you a couple of reasons on why this activity component is super useful. First of all, effects. A benefit to using activity is that when we go into mode hidden, any and all effects inside any of its children will be cleaned up. For example, let's say we have my component inside of activity. And inside of my component, we have this use layout effect. Whenever we want to clean up effects in React, we put a return statement inside of the effect. In this case, we have a fairly basic scenario. We have this video ref that we attach to this video element down here. And what we want to do is whenever we hide this component or whenever we clean up this component, we just want to pause the video. That's all that this here is doing. Normally, this entire return statement here will only run if the component is fully unmounted. However, what wrapping this entire component in activity allows us to do is run this cleanup function whenever we hide the component rather than fully unmounting it. Especially when you're dealing with refs, doing something like this is pretty common. So if I go over here and I start playing this video, it plays just like normal. We hear the audio, the video is playing, and then whenever we hide the component, it pauses it. The audio stopped. However, when I show it again, we're still at five seconds. If I let it play more and go to, let's say, eight seconds, pause it again, reshow it, we're still at eight seconds. Again, the only reason the audio stops and we see the video actually pause is because we are running this cleanup effect inside of the use layout effect. Let's compare what we just did to the two traditional ways of doing conditional rendering. Let's first look at how this behaves if we use the first option that I showed you, the most common option of using the logical AND operator. If I start playing this video, we hear the audio like normal, and we go to, let's say, I don't know, four seconds. Then we hide the component, we reshow it, and now we're starting back at zero seconds because we lost all of its internal state. In cases where we want to save the progress of the video, this method right here isn't going to work. So let's comment this out and uncomment the second method where we are just conditionally hijacking the CSS to give it display none. If I go with this route and I go over here and start playing the video, and we let it run for a couple of seconds, and then we go to hide the video, the audio is still playing. This is also not what we want. The reason the audio keeps playing is because with this method, this effect right here is never going to run, so we're never going to actually pause the video. So we basically have to pick our poison. We can either run cleanup effects, but always lose track of the state if we do conditional rendering like this, or we can not lose track of the state, we can keep the state, but not run any cleanup effects. So we can't really do both. However, with this new activity component, we actually can. We can have both things true at the same time. Just to show you again, if I go ahead and save this, and then I start playing the video, let it play for a couple of seconds, hide the video, it pauses, and we start at the same place that we stopped. Now we have the best of both worlds. Until now, we could not both clean up effects and maintain state when hiding something. But now, with this new activity component, we can. Aside from being able to actually run cleanup effects, the next reason why I like the activity component is because the syntax right here I think is just clean. If we compare these two methods side by side with the activity and then doing the style tag, I think it's clear that using the activity component just looks more visually appealing. No one wants to conditionally render using a style tag to hijack the CSS. Activity already does this under the hood, plus a bunch of other stuff like the effect cleanup that we just went over, so it looks cleaner while also doing more work. Another great reason for using the activity component is that it keeps control inside of the context of React. I'm a big proponent of keeping things inside of React whenever we can. For example, doing something like, I don't know, document 
dot query selector just like this instead of just using a ref is something that I generally advise against because you're not keeping logic inside of your React app, rather you're accessing the DOM or just straight JavaScript directly. And using display none is kind of in that same vein. Usually it's not going to be dangerous if you're smart about it. However, if React provides a built-in way to handle that exact logic and that exact use case, we should just use that instead. We get the exact same intended effect, but we let React handle it, which inherently will lead to safer, more production safe components. So that's why in a scenario like this, I think using the activity component is great to replace this exact use case. Another thing that I'll quickly mention is that in the docs for the release of activity, they mentioned that in the future, they're most likely gonna add more modes than just having visible and hidden. So it's reasonable to assume that going forward, you'll be able to be more flexible with your conditional rendering as this component matures. With all that being said, I am not advocating to replace every single conditional render in your app with this activity component. There are clear cases where you should use it and also clear cases where you should not use it. Let's first talk about the cases where you do not need to use this new activity component. The first case where you do not need to use activity is if your condition for rendering any given component is static and cannot be changed by user events. For example, this code right here. Let's say I again want to conditionally render my component and I only want to show it if my admin level is greater than two. Here we can see I just have this hard-coded object where my admin level is always three. In this case, there is zero reason to use the activity component. We should just do traditional conditional rendering. And that's because no amount of user triggered events on this page over here is ever going to change my admin level from three. It's just hard coded and stuck at three. So because there's no user event that can change this and this condition right here is static, using activity would just be overkill. There's no reason not to do it like this. Maybe for another user, their admin level is always hard coded to two, in which case we're not going to show this component. Even though this user object down here is hard coded, we can pretend for a second that to get into this app, you have to log in and every user just has a given admin level. This is exactly what I consider to be a static condition. No amount of me messing around on this page or doing anything is ever going to change that. So there's no reason to use activity. There's no additional benefit and it's just extra overhead that we don't need. In the earlier example, the condition that was showing and hiding my component was based on a use state that could simply change on a button click. That example is definitely not static, which is why activity is great to use. But here, with a static admin level that won't change or isn't tied to React state in any way, we should just do traditional conditional rendering. The next example where you do not need to use activity is if you genuinely do not care about maintaining state. If we go back to our original example of having the count with the video here, and you want to maintain the state of count between each time you show and hide the component, then activity is the perfect use case. However, if I genuinely do not care about losing this internal state and I have no reason to maintain it, then doing a traditional conditional render using the logical and is completely fine. In this case, I'm saying, okay, I can increment the state however high I want. However, whenever I hide it or get it out of the DOM, I don't want it to keep its state so that whenever I reshow it, it goes back to its default value. If that's what you want, this is perfectly fine. In this scenario, I would just be mindful of the user experience. If you have a situation like this and think users would be fine getting their progress reset, go with the traditional route. If you think that users might have a better experience if you can maintain their progress between showing and hiding, then maybe you should use activity. The very last thing that I want to talk about in this video is practical real world use cases for this new activity component. I showed you this video cleanup example, which is a great scenario, but what are some more situations that I think could actually happen in real world apps when using activity could be helpful? This list is not going to be exhaustive because I'm sure I could sit here and find a bunch of different use cases, but let's just examine a few. One of the first examples I could think of is modals. The use case for modals largely depends on how they are made and how they are rendered. However, they are one of the most commonly conditionally rendered elements that I can think of. In this example, we simply have a button that will conditionally render a modal. Whenever we click on the button, the modal opens, and whenever we click externally outside the modal, it's going to close. Right now, for the conditional render, we're just using the logical AND operator. A situation might arise where you have some form fields inside of a modal just like this. With modals, you have to be careful though. What if, as a user, I spend a bunch of time filling out some of these fields here, like I don't know, let's assume this is actually kind of long to fill out, I have a few things, and then oops, I accidentally click out of the modal. Now when I go back in, my progress is completely reset and I'm starting back from zero. Of course, there are always ways using JavaScript to block leaving a modal if I have unsafe changes. And of course you could also argue, you know, user error. But if you don't wanna worry about that at all and one easy way to maintain the state, simply wrap this modal in activity. If I go ahead and comment this out and then I uncomment this, reimport activity, go ahead and save this now. 
and I open up our modal and I start typing in these fields, like, I don't know, I'll fill out the email and password fields and I accidentally click out like this. Oops, I go back in, but my state is all still there. I never have to worry about the user losing all of their progress because with activity, we just hide the component, we clean up any effects as needed, and we maintain the state. If I had some additional effects inside of this sum modal component, like, I don't know, whenever it's closed, we want to play some audio, activity will also take care of that. Like I showed you before, it maintains state, and it will also clean up any effects, giving you the best of both worlds. And all it takes is wrapping your component in activity and giving it the condition that you want to hide on. It's really that simple. Another example where activity could be really helpful is an accordion style component or one that has a sub navigation menu where I can open and close different sections at a time where I can open and close different menus that are each rendering their own components inside of them. For example, this is an accordion style component, which is usually just a set of tabs where only one can be open at a time. Some could allow multiple open at a time, but this one just allows one of these to be open, either general info or notifications. We don't have to worry too much about all this code here, except for this chunk right here. This condition right here is how we determine what section of the accordion is open at any given time. If is open right here is true, then that section is going to be open and we're going to show that component. If we follow the traditional conditional rendering route just like this, we're going to run into the same problem we've had all throughout this video. For example, I have notifications open right now. I have project name right here that's checked. Let's say I also check keywords. If I go ahead and now open general info, but then I go back to notifications, now just project name is checked and keywords is not. Because I'm conditionally rendering like this using the logical and, we lose track of all this internal state whenever we close it. The same applies for the inverse. If I go into general info, I have a couple fields here. I can just type in some random stuff. I don't know, like here in the project name and also in tags, a bunch of random letters, open notifications, come back, and now all my state is gone. Again, same thing. When we do this, we are fully unmounting the component, meaning the state gets lost. On the flip side, if I comment this out, and I add activity around this whole thing, just like we've done all throughout this video, import it from React, and I go over here now, I can type stuff into our project name and type stuff into additional info, head over to notifications, and then come back, and all my state is still there. No state was cleared, no component was fully unmounted, we just use activity to main state and keep everything smooth, and then React takes care of it. No weird side effects, no weird behavior, we just get it behaving exactly like we want it. And that's all there really is to it. This brand new activity component, a brand new way to conditional render things in a super clean and nice way. And again, I want to reiterate that these few use cases that I just went over are definitely not exhaustive. There are plenty of things this new component could be used for, anywhere from the examples that I showed you to drop down, ref cleanup, speeding up performance, and all sorts of other stuff. If you're new to React or you're experienced and just want to make the most of React's features to make your code that much cleaner, I'd highly encourage you to just mess around with this component and try it out for yourself. With that being said, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.